Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me. Elko, how are you? Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, that was just the Six Nations madness. Amazing. Yeah, we are. We are ten minutes after the end of Wales Scotland, and my opening question is: What on earth have we just witnessed? It's just like weird. I mean. The Green Goblin was in the stand. I mean, it's just, I mean, it just couldn't have got any wilder. It was like, talk about a game of two halves and we'll get into it, but the psychology of a momentum, uh, referee, I was just crazy. And and because I, I really feared that there might <laughs> that there might have been a bit of civil unrest at the Principality because things were going that badly that, you know, it, people could have kicked off. And then it was just like watching, you know, Wales in the 70s. It was just mad, just crazy. It was absolutely incredible. So just like at half time, I was thinking it looked like basically Wales were playing against their bigger brother, basically. And, and the bigger brother, Scotland, were just, just toying with them. Like they were in complete control. They're winning most of the contact situations. They're winning the set piece. They're winning the kicking battle. And it looked like they could do with them whatever they wanted. And it was 20 nil at half time. They scored directly after half time as well to make it 27 nil. And it, for me, there was nothing in it for Wales. There was no way they were coming back. Yeah, I, I, I felt the same way. It was sort of, I was almost sort of going to put on the uh, Munster are play, playing the Crusaders tonight in Toman Park. I was thinking I might have a little little glance of that, but but thanks, thankfully didn't. Um, yeah, it was like they they were they were done. They were no contest. They could not win a line out. It was embarrassing. Um, and I guess there's a massive case around personnel changes and how, what, what a significant you know change can be made by, by doing that. And Gatland, I think, was fed up. Um, I think he was wasn't too happy with his line out coach. <laughs> looking at the the body language between him and him and Humphreys in the stand and stuff. And and um. I mean, it was just only one. It was so one-sided. It was embarrassing. You just uh, like you wondered what what could be said at half time to to pull that out of the fire to, to to get anything out of it. Like even maybe a bonus point, maybe. But you you know, and I, I said before, uh, I tweeted out before, so sort of saying you know, this, you know, come on, Scotland, we've had enough of this. You need to get your soft on the belly out of this and go for it. And I thought, wow, they really did and showed up and really took it and, and get that win for first time in 20 years. But it was just how things change. Love rugby. Love it. Yeah. So I think that the writing was on the wall really early doors, particularly in the kicking battle, because Kyle Rowe got the ball kicked to him and he whacked it pretty much the length of the field with his first kick. And I was like, oh, my goodness me, that ball has gone a, a country mile. And then Finn Russell backed that up with some more great kicking along with a 50-22 and like they were just dominated everything. Like Scotland played with a pace and they played with some guile as well. And they just kept the ball moving. It looked like they could score even more tries than the two that they did in that first half. Yeah, and 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 sort of uh the intensity and, and rook and game line Wales just didn't seem to be at the races. They just as you said, it was like a big brother and little brother. They just Scotland were able to assert their dominance in every aspect of the game um, and it was even that weird bit where um, the Welsh fullback kicked long to Finn and he didn't bother chasing it and no one chased and Finn just stood there and went like, well, I'm not going to move until someone and then he would decide to, to whack it um, and look, Scotland played incredibly well I mean that 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 50-22 from, from Finn was awesome and you could just I mean obviously we weren't there but you could feel us there uh, the great thing about uh, televised games from there is, for whatever reason, you can, you can get an idea of what's going on, probably because the roof was on. Uh, we'll talk about <laughs> that. Um, and um, it, you could feel like, oh, well, and then you could feel that there was quiet. <laughs> it was like, what? Is this a COVID game? It's just odd. But, um, yeah, Scotland dominated that, that, that first half. It was scary. Yeah, so Wales, you mentioned the line out there with 50% success rate in the first half, which is just right. unacceptable in, at any level, let alone international level. They seem to not want to play with any kind of ball at all within, with, 
certainly within their own half. Um, Costello was kicking everything and not that well. It was pretty aimless, just booting the ball up in the air stuff, really, which Scotland were dominating in the sky as well. So, I mean, they got nothing. And when Wales did get some possession, which they did for a couple of short periods, they got absolutely smashed in the contact. So it was, I mean, it was basically, it felt like it was game over. And when Van der Merwe scored at the start of the second half, which again was the cheapest, easiest try from a kick return, uh, I mean, great finish and all that, but it looked like it looked like an under 12s game, to be honest, didn't it? The way it was run in, it felt like everything was over, but it wasn't. What changed, Alco? What do you think? What do you think made the difference to what happened next? <laughs> Jesus, if we knew that, you'd bottle it and and, and sell it. <laughs> it's it's just amazing the psychology of the game. It's um, how things can just change, and and for the best will in the world, whatever. I mean, we we've been we've been really loyal to Gatlin. I think we've got a lot of respect to him, uh, both of us, I think. I, 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 having sort of, I guess, we, we've, we've grown, our rugby careers have been through when he's been really dominant and stuff. And we've, we've every faith in him in terms of, you know, a simple game plan and everything else. But the, the bottom line is, if if your players just aren't at the races, you can have whatever game plan you want. And actually, screw the game plan, just run fast, hard, and put your body on the line, and just be mental. And that's some of the stuff they were doing. I mean, Wainwright was out of this world in the second half. I mean, he just didn't care about his his own, you know, health. He just went went out. Um, scrum half came on, made a huge difference. Lloyd made a massive difference. We love watching Lloyd. We think he's a fantastic player. He's just instinct. You know, he just plays with instinct. And actually, that's what they needed because they were screwed. And Scotland were like, uh. Well, no, we want to <laughs> slow it down, calm down. No, and oh, we're going to manage the clock while we have our sin bins, which was, you know, and that goes against what Finn is good at. Finn needs to play as well. And, and all, you could just feel the whole momentum move red and the Welsh doing what the Welsh are the best at. Just, you know, JPR with Blessing was probably looking down going, just play, just play, just throw it around and go. And they came back and my God, it was... It was a jo- oh, that second half. I was screaming. <laughs> My cats are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was an absolute joy because Wales threw out any kind of structure, really. And they just played a move. They just moved the ball, played what they saw. They typically played width to width, so gave it a lot of airtime as well. Scotland became so passive in defence. If Scotland had gone at that with a load of line speed, they could have got Wales in trouble there, but they really didn't. Yeah. Wales took advantage and... Uh, well, they, they initially scored a try through a uh, line-out catch and drive, a really clever little shift drive round the yeah. front with both of them going over. But um, fortunately, Lloyd missed that conversion. So it was 27-26, and, uh, sorry, 27-5, excuse me. And at the in that moment, I thought it's unlikely that's going to be crucial. But it then meant that they had to score more than three converted tries to win. And as it turned out... It was, uh, yeah, it was critical. Yeah, it was. It was just they just eked up. But isn't it funny how, like, okay, on the on the flip side, and we both played in teams, and I've been on the sideline watching some of my teams where you can feel it just fall away from you, where you're, 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 you're instead of just playing what's in front of you, you're thinking about what maybe what the messaging is and how we've got to kill the clock and. You know, let's just stick to this, and 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 then that throws your timing off, and then it gives the other team, you know, um, energy and 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 sort of that they can feel, you know, in the game as a player as well, you can feel stuff going on, and you know, and and you could see the way Wales were just going for it. Just let's let's just crack on. Massive um, mention for um, uh, Rafael. I think, oh God, he was. He uh, to be fair to him, he was good in the first half as well. You know, he he was putting it about and and getting in, and he was getting you know destroyed at, at the rooks because he didn't really have much backup. But he was he was absolutely class. Um, I I thought Dyer had a good game as well when he had ball in hand. Um, I mean they were all shit in the first half, <laughs> Bar <laughs> Rafael. But and then all of a sudden they were like you know lines watch again. Holy God, these guys, some of these guys can can go at it sort of thing. But um, yeah, the referee I thought was um. At one stage, I thought he'd had enough and thought, right, I'm going to even this up um, when when Wales scored and then he gave the yellow card to, I can't remember who it was. Um, George Stone. Yeah, and then that kind of really, really kind of turned things up. But um, what a mega game. Six Asians is mad. 
Yeah, incredible. Uh, pick, just picking up on Wayne Wright, who you mentioned earlier, incredible second half. And when when he scored, right, they took a tap and go penalty under the sticks. Elliot D carried it in. Did you count how many forwards hit that rock? No, I didn't see. Well, uh, six, all of them. Six, six <laughs> players hit that rock. And I was like, I was screaming, oh my God, no, don't like, far too many people went in. But I just made enough space for Wainwright to pick and go really cleanly. I'm not sure he's even touched when he scored, was he? No, he just kind of fell over. It was, you know, compared to some of the scramble. I thought the interviews after, again, I don't, I don't know what you, you were getting over there, but uh, BBC here in the UK. And, um, it was really interesting because they, they interviewed Wayne, Wayne got man of the match on the losing side, which is unusual. Um, and and his, he, he just had a smirk on his face, kind of going, oh, like, how do you feel? He's like, yeah, um, really, no, we lost. And then they interviewed Finn Russell and he's like cheeky smile going, yeah, we're really disappointed. And they're like, yeah, but you've just broke, you, you broke that got the camel off your back, so, uh, monkey off your back, should I say, um, uh, getting that 22 year thing. And he's like, yeah, but we're just really disappointed. We were just, it's funny, isn't it? It's just weird. Uh, what a game. Love it. Uh, rugby at its, at its finest and its worst. <laughs> yeah. And it's wildest. Um, another player I want to pick out, we mentioned him already, George Turner, his tackling was insane. He absolutely buried people and like he got on the wrong side of the referee and obviously ended up with the yellow card. But wow, like in terms of his intensity in defence, if the entire Scottish team had that in the second half, I don't think they'd have had any problems. No, he was he was an absolute absolute beast, and and yeah, that that, that kind of intensity dial got turned down for whatever whatever reason, and, and it moved over to the to the Welsh team. But yeah, he was he was banging people. Um, and again, sorry uh, when I said well, thinking about the referee. Uh, Brilliant decision on on sort of I was like oh when they went to TMO and it was the head contact and I was thinking oh here we go please that's you know uh, the Scottish player has gone in at the same time as as I think it was Tompkins had had gone down on a on a on a tackle Costello, player Costello. yeah I was Costello and and they they clashed heads but there was nothing there was nothing that that Scottish player could do he was as low as he could be. And I thought it was really good, such a heartening thing to hear referee go, no, look, we've nah, it wasn't foul play. He's hit the rook. He hasn't took his arm. His intentions are good. Play on. Yeah, we can't have a game of rugby without head contacts. They are going to happen inadvertently. And it's good in a top game like that, that a referee's recognised that because I think otherwise we're in a real dangerous um, slide towards no contact rugby, basically. And I don't think anybody wants that. No, it just it, it breaks the game up completely. I think people will just get confused. It will ruin, it will ruin games. Um, it was a, it was a strong performance from O'Keefe. To be fair, um, it was the right decision, and I'm 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 glad. And maybe you know this. We we spoke about this uh, before the World Cup because we were a little bit worried. I, I think th- their attitudes are slightly better. Oh, better as that's. They view it slightly differently to to Northern Hemisphere, and we I think the refs need to get together and go look. What do we want from this? Um, player safety, of course, is absolutely paramount, but there needs to be a reality check. You know, it's the same as UFC. It's the same as boxing. It's a contact sport. These things will happen. So, well done uh, to him, and and um, could have could have uh, could have been a talking point that um, we wouldn't want. Yeah, absolutely. But it's but it's good to say that. Referees only do and only implement what the players and the governing bodies ask for. So the referees are just doing their job based on the information they get from coaches, players and governing bodies. So, you know, their, their hands are tied in some respects in terms of these decisions. Um, yeah. Let's go back to the players. One other player I want to single out is Corey Domachowski, the Welsh loose head, who I think played the full 80 in the end, carried like a titan for most of the game. Towards the end, he made a tackle in open field. I can't remember which Scottish centre it was. I think it might have been Tua Pelotu when Scotland mm. were coming back. And I just thought, like, fair play. That was I thought he was outstanding today. He was, he was outstanding. And bear in mind, he took an awful whack uh, in the first sort of, 10, 15. I thought he was done for. Um, it looked like a, a really bad stinger. And you could tell straight away that he, was, he wasn't he was right, he, he, just by his body language um, on the floor there. And then was kind of looking at the physio, kind of going, oh, uh, you know, I think he went off, he went off for, I think he went off for HIA, didn't he? I'm sure he did. Um, and then, and then kind of came back on, but he was superb, played really, really well. 
Good um, so anyway, well, what, what, go on. Yep. Sorry, I was just going to talk uh, just on, on props. Uh, just one disappointment from the game was um, Schumann. Um, he's he's had his hair cut. <laughs> so, like, for us baldies, I was just, what's he doing? <laughs> Lovely head of hair, that man. Anyway, yeah. love that hair. I, I completely agree. Um, <laughs> so, Wales did get back to 26 27. Another shift our try from Man, I think it was, and we mentioned Waymark's try. And still uh, seven or eight minutes to go, I think, something like that. And they get the ball, they have the ball in their own territory. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you've just got to keep going. You've got to keep going with this incredible momentum that you've got. And they box kicked. And they basically yeah. never really got the ball back again, never really got territory again for the rest of the game. And I just thought yeah. they have to ride this momentum now. And for whatever reason, they went back to trying to get territory. They went back to trying to compete in a kicking game. And it didn't work for them. I was, I was so gutted that they chose that option. Yeah, I know, I know exactly. Sort of on their 10-meter line on the, on the left. And, and um, who'd come on? Was it uh, Williams' uh, box kick? And that's the weird thing. It's like you've gone from a, a mindset of nothing to lose, Let's crack on. Let's you know. Let's let's just play, play, play. Move it wide, move it wide, and let's see what happens. To a point of we might win this thing. Now we need to be careful. It's so weird how the how the how the brain works. But then, like if he if 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 they run and then like he's done the safe thing there, right? That's probably what they've spoken about during the week. That's that's and I, that's that's where in one way professionalism is kind of and and the pressure on players and coaches to win and. It's it is it is a weird it's a weird thing how the how the, the the psychology comes into it. But I agree with you. I think they should have gone for it there. And because even um, Jiffy on, on that was saying like he was going go go go. We got numbers. We got numbers. And he didn't. He didn't. You could see all the players come up and they did have overlap. But they're looking yeah, at in the video. I'm not actually blaming Thomas Williams for that. I think it was no. a team thing. I think yeah. I think their energy just shifted as a team from being. Yeah let's go for everything to, okay, well, we've got a chance now. And I, I wonder if they spoke about it after that try was scored. I wonder if they had like a clear direction given, like given to them by whoever, they, to, well, by Jenkins, you know, because they you may need have been, to, yeah, you need to be really deliberate about that. I think in those moments, uh, I guess that what they're probably trying to do was to play for a penalty. That's the feeling I got to, they were trying to get it. And I, the TMO didn't come in. It looked like there was a high tackle and he never came in and that was towards the end and then there was a knock on and then and then that stuff happened with Van der Merde down the end where they got where he got held up. But it felt like they were trying to get into that 10 metre 22 dead man's land to try and get a penalty for Lloyd's kick. Um, and that's why they were kicking it rather than what they were doing, which was scoring tries. Yeah. Um that's it. That's... Yeah, I mean, they did get one more opportunity because they somehow won a penalty, kicked a touch, but then their line out was in oh, the second oh, half. They missed, and it was, um, oh, geez, just so I was I'm generally gutted for them. I just think all that spirit to come back in and to just not quite have the yeah. composure at the end to, to sort of create a situation where they might get the winning points was was devastating, really. Yeah, they'll need to look at them. I mean, in, in the first half, I feel it was personnel. I think it was the overthrow city. Um and then when the other hooker came on, well again, like he came up he came up they probably said, look, I simplified because all the balls really were I think to two and four. And then that one was I think was a tail ball that they lost um at the end, or certainly middle to middle to tail. So maybe they should have gone to the front and done a shift another shift drive and seen where they got to. But ifs, buts and maybes. Um they they'll they'll be happily having a, a they, they were they were staring down the sort of barrel of like no one's going out tonight and we're straight in tomorrow for 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 a, for a session to they'll be happily out in Cardiff tonight having a few <laughs> beers and getting slaps on the back. Well, in terms of championship points, they did get two. They, they scored the try bonus yeah. point and they got a losing yeah. bonus point as well. Scotland got their four for winning, but they didn't score the four tries. Uh, very close right at the death. I mean, couldn't be closer with with Van der Merwe just getting held up right at the final uh, whistle. But, um, yeah, so four points to two. I mean, it leaves the championship as such really wide open. Yeah, and I, I guess we're, we're probably being, just the way the game went, like we're, we're sort of, 
dismissing Scotland a bit. I thought Scotland were class in the first half and it was about time that they they turned up and they looked extremely dangerous. The players that we'd said in terms of of backline were, were able to flow because again we'd spoken about if they can get dominance up front, which they clearly did and in abundance, these guys in the back back line could could do some stuff. Um Finn was having fun. Um the centres look good and, and clearly Van Amerta was just scored another absolute wonder try sort of thing. So they, they they look really good. I mean, the worry for them is, how, I mean, they, they, they've got to work out what the hell happened. You know, what did they, how did they let, I mean, they should have, I, I, I honestly thought they were going to put 45, 50 on them. Um, and uh, they, they'll have to have a little look because the, like New Zealand, that, that wouldn't happen in New Zealand or South Africa. I don't, I don't think. Um, although the Six Nations is funny, isn't it? But uh, Scotland were really, really good. And then they were, they were like, uh, France will be licking their lips for next week. Um, yeah, and, and this could be, it could be a really good lesson for Scotland, you know, to get out yeah, of there with a win, having played really well for sort of 42 minutes um, and still still got the win, still got the four points, still got the away win, got that monkey off their back Yeah, and, and know that they've still got a lot of work to do as well. Um, okay, let's wrap this up. That's what we thought about that game, this wild and crazy game down there in Cardiff. We I loved it. What did you think? Uh, any key moments that we've missed out on that you think were, were really key? Let us know in the comments down below and we will join you there for a conversation. Give the video a thumbs up if you don't mind. Helps other people find it, which we all like. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Alco, thank you so much for your time. Cheers, CT. On to the next week. <laughs> you can subscribe there. No, there. Watch the next one there. And don't forget to get out and play.